Hey everybody. <laughs> All right, coming at you live from the gear room and we have another exciting video for you. And what this is, it is a tagged video fire challenge, okay? Now, um, the channel One Foot in the Wild has issued a fire challenge, okay? He issued it to me and two other people and the winner is going to get a knife and he is going to decide who the winner is. <laughs> So good luck to all three of us, I suppose. But what the challenge is, is the challenge is to create four, four different fires, okay? And you need to create it using four different methods. And you've also got to use four different fire lays. And with each fire, you have to show four different ways of taking something from that fire to aid in creating another fire, okay? Now, <clears throat> that's kind of an iffy situation right there because the majority of what you can take from making a fire is charred material. And usually that involves ferro rod or flint and steel, okay? Uh, not much you can do with charred material with a bow drill or a hand drill, so I'll be showing the 444, all the methods, and I'll be showing the methods of procuring from a fire to help aiding in another fire, but I may or may not use them. Two of them I, I think I will use. I'll, I'll use them for the ferro rod and the flint and steel, okay? And uh, so I've got everything laid out here on the table, and um, I guess it's time to go outside and get started on it. <laughs> all right, not much else to say. Let's get busy. And uh, one other thing that I'm going to mention while I'm at it, uh, so that I don't chicken out, is my four methods. One of them will be <clears throat> the hand drill, okay? Then one of them will be a ferro rod. One of them will be flint and steel. And then one of them will be the method that I can't stand. <laughs> the bow drill and I have my choice of <clears throat> I have three bow drills here I have three and I'll have to choose whichever one is my favorite and I'm not a big fan of the bow drill the hand drill is my favorite so that's probably what we're going to start with and another thing when one foot in the wild did this challenge he was inspired by Dave Canterbury's uh, fire playlist because he's got a huge playlist on YouTube of several different methods of making fire and materials for fire and fire lays and ways of preparing for the next fire from the fire. So he said you can either choose from his list or do your own thing. So a lot of these methods are going to be on his list, but you know me, I'm going to do my own thing. <laughs> now as you can see, it has clearly snowed. <laughs> it snowed about two days ago here. And uh, it's a good, wet, sloppy mess. Now, anywhere where it's shady, there's still snow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find a, a good, muddy mess where the, the snow is melted off. <laughs> so this should make it just a tiny bit more challenging because wherever there's snow, it's wet. And wherever it's melted, it's wet. <laughs> so I'm going to find a sunny spot to do this thing on. All right, so I found a spot that isn't quite as muddy as the rest of the yard, and there's no snow here. And I got me a little mat here to sit, to kneel down on. <laughs> and, of course, I got, I got uh, as usual, I've got my helper helping me out. <laughs> All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start with a lean-to fire. And uh, there's a few different variations of it, but basically what it is is it's a bunch of wood leaned up against another piece of wood. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to take a piece and I'm just going to sharpen it out on the end. Okay. Okay. Sharpen it. Then, I'm going to beat it in the ground at an angle. About like... See if you're getting it. Get away, cat. I'll beat it in the ground at an angle just like that right there and then I'll show you what the 
the next step will be. I'm gonna get a decent shot of this. So I've got the stick laid in there. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some cedar bark and I'm gonna lean it up against it. Because I feel like cedar bark I feel like cedar bark, I, I find it everywhere I go. And it's a great way of uh, getting this stuff to uh, really catch fire, catch the flames and, and get them going. So what I'm gonna do is just lean some of this stuff up. Didn't take a whole lot. <clears throat> like I say, this is what's considered the lean-to method. There's several different lean tos, and I mean it, it. It is what it is. It's your your leaning material up against another piece. All right, now let me grab his camera and give you a bird, bird's eye view. There's one side. There's the other side. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take some wood, I got some wood sp split up here, because there's no reason for me to waste a bunch of camera time batoning wood, because I've got four fires to create and show. So I'm just leaning all this wood up like this, just like that. And so what I'm doing now is I'm essentially, essentially making a place to put my tender bundle right under here. And as it flames up, it's going to catch all this other stuff on fire. Alright. So let's get this done. Alright. I'm fixing to show you another view of it. Let's grab you again. There's another view of it. All right, lean-to fire. All right, I got you down here where you can see my lean-to fire lay here. And got a piece of wood to work off of. Got a little piece of cedar here that I'm going to catch my uh, ember on. I got my hand drill, mullein spindle cedar hearth board. So let's put this right here. I got a tender bundle here. All right, kind of poke a hole in it a little bit. I'll put the ember down in there, and then blow it, and then shove it in here. And then I may, for extra insurance, lay a few little thin sticks on top of it, make sure it gets going. All righty, so let's see if I can do this. I don't have much luck with doing this on days like today. You know where it's everything's cold and damp but I'm gonna give it a try all right so let's give this a try hope it does hope, hope it doesn't draw the moisture out of my foot that'd be bad all right let's give this a shot see what it does All right, let this sit there and rest a minute. I'm an old man. This ain't as easy as it used to be. I don't think it's smoking on its own. All right, let's give it a little bit more. Oh, no, it broke. Crap. 
my spindle broke. Uh, and I dumped my half of my dust over. Dang it. Uh, I'm going to go get another spindle and see if I can pick right up where I left off. Alright, I got another spindle. That old spindle was uh, so old that it was dried out and it, it finally cracked on me. Now, I haven't messed with the dust. I've left the dust because there's no reason to completely start over. Anytime you go for a second shot, don't disturb your dust. Okay, because the first part of dr hand drilling, you're creating the dust. And when it fills up the notch, that's when you'll get it glowing. So I'm just going to pick up with where I was. Oh, all right, let's give us another shot. See what happens. I'm going to let it sit there a minute because I'm just about out of steam. See, when the bottom of the hand drill is still hot, it'll help ignite the coal. Which I think I've done. Alright. That's what I want. It's smoking on its own. Alright. I love the hand drill. I just... I never said it was easy. Alright, let's quit messing around. Now I'm going to dump it in here. Now, instead of blowing it, I'm going to cup it gently, and I'm going to wave it around. And it should catch on in a minute. may have to blow on it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm letting it grow without blowing it out. Now I'm going to blow a little bit. There you go. So now you take it and you set it under here. And then I'm going to put a few more pieces on top of it. There you go. And as you can see, I have gaps in it. And those gaps are allowing some oxygen to get in there. And you just fill this up with the inside. And you can even cover up the front if you want to make sure that everything catches and that is the lean to fire by hand drill <sighs> season on down
All right, that's going pretty good. Now, I'm actually glad that the hand drill failed the first time. Because that's a good lesson. That don't get mad and throw your dust everywhere and give up. Don't get angry about it. Keep your dust. Because you created that dust by hand. You take your anger out <laughs> by taking the broken hand drill. And you burn it. <laughs> that way it won't ever... It won't never burn me again. All right, I have a successful lean-to fire out of the hand drill. So that takes care of one method each. So what I'm gonna do now is, as my preparation for the next fire, I always, uh, I'm gonna make uh, char cloth. Now, I always have either on a cotton t-shirt or a cotton do-rag. So all I have to do is cut off several of these pieces and just throw them in my container and seal them up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide it over into the fire. Like that. Alright. Let's push a couple extra pieces of wood on here. Now you can see how high the flames are on this fire. And the reason for that is because you've got such gaps in it. There's such gaps between the wood that uh, that's what happens. It, it allows it to feed itself. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be watching for smoke to come out of that container. And I'm going to watch for that smoke to come out. And as it smokes, when it stops smoking, that's time to pull it off the fire and cover it up. Because you don't want any oxygen in there to com completely burn your charred material. So let's just let that sit there for a little while. We'll watch it. Smoke coming out. Now if you'll notice something about this fire, it hasn't completely collapsed yet. And that's because this main stick right here that I stuck in the ground was a wet green stick. Okay. So that helps in support, su supporting this fire. And you'll take all your dry ones and you'll lean your dry ones up against it. Now pull that out just a little bit. I'm going to scoot it back in there. You don't want flames coming out of them holes. You want smoke coming out of them. So as soon as it starts smoking, you want to watch it. And then when the sm smoke goes away, you pull it off. And then you put a piece of metal over it. All right, that main green log I was telling you about hadn't collapsed yet. But it's fixing to because it is glowing orange. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot this thing out. Because it smoked and then it stopped smoking. So let's just scoot this out and let it cool off. And put a piece of steel over the top. So that it can cool. Nope, fire's collapsing now. So let's pull this out. All right, now I'm going to let this thing sit here and cool off so we can open it up and see what we got. Now this is fixing to collapse. It's just barely holding itself up. It's just barely got a gap in there. Up and out there and that collapse. But see, at this point, you're just going to be throwing wood on top of a wood and that'll be your fire. All right, and as soon as this thing cools off, we're going to take a peek inside and then we can move on to the next fire if I have enough daylight. Now that fire there is about dying out, so <clears throat> while that's dying out and the char cloth is cooling, let's go ahead and just get started with the next fire light. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two a day. So, let's see. There it is. Had a knife in here. Alright, what we're going to do now, the next fire, I'm going to do a flint and steel because I have uh, fresh, uh, fresh char cloth. Alright, so I'm going to do... The log cabin fire is going to be the next one. Let me baton this here real quick. I got most of it done. Alright, so the, the uh, log cabin fire load is where basically you're going to be making a log cabin. Alright, what that is is just simply laying logs or sticks in a fashion like it was a log cabin just like that uh, very simple but very effective 
And having things split like this helps sometimes. Sometimes if you got a natural split, you can just put a knife in it like that. And just give it a split and it'll split like that. You see, you get a lot of air in this fire. There's plenty of room for air in between here. All right. I hope you can see that pretty good. If not, you'll get another view of it. Now, I'm going to go get my uh, flint and steel. Put a few more on there. And then what you can do is you can just lay some. Once you put your tender bundle in there, you can take some of these split pieces and just sort of lay them on the top. And let them catch. Very easy fire to do. Very easy. All right, I'm gonna go get my flint and steel, and then we're gonna open up that char cloth and uh, give it a try. All right, I got my flint and steel, and uh, here's a couple of my kits. One of the kits is in a little leather bag like this, and I keep that inside there and in my pocket. It's flint, and it's a little piece of uh, steel in there. That's one of them, and then here's another one that I wear on this paracord. I wear it around my neck and it's in this neat little bag. It's a little camouflage bag. And I think I keep char cloth in here. Yeah, I do. I keep some char cloth in there. And I have, pull it out. Piece of flint, my steel. I think I got three pieces in there. Yeah, there's another piece. And there's a piece. I think we're going to use this kit right here. I'm not going to use this though. I'm going to use this. I'm going to put it back in there. I'm going to use what's in the can. All right, let's lay this to the side. And then another kit that I have, it's in this little metal container here. <laughs> I can't get it open. Let's see if I can open it with this knife right here. I have flint and steel on this little kit that I carry around. It's my good luck color. <laughs> All right, so let's open up our uh, char cloth over here. All right, we got our log cabin fire right here. I'll give you a closer look to it in a minute. Let's open up our char cloth and see what it looks like. Uh, char cloth. Perfect. Move it around. Perfect. That may be falling apart. All right, so what we're going to do, oh, I ain't even got to hold it. It's done cooled off. I guess because it's so cold outside, it's like, uh, 39 or 40 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, let's see. He's over here and take another look at this. I'll get you in a different view. Now. All right, here's another view of my log cabin fire. And when I say log cabin fire, just essentially think of that as you have the walls built. And then once you light off a tender bundle and put it inside it, then you're just going to be putting the roof over it. Okay? And then that'll get the fire going. So, now what this was, is this was just some plants. And what I did is I just started curling it up. And that's why you want to do these things, is you just want to, any kind of dry plant like that, especially something that's real fluffy like that, you'll want to curl it up real good. Now the problem is, uh, with this type of fire, is putting the tender bundle inside it without knocking it everywhere. So what I'm going to do right now is we're going to get the char cloth out. Sees you over here. Let's get a piece of char cloth out. All right, this is my second fire, flint and steel. Let's see if we can do this. Now you want to lay this. First off, it's good to see which part, which part will give you the sparks. Now I'm getting a few sparks off of that side, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it directly on top, like that. 
Now let's see if we can get it to spark. And you just want to let it sit there for a minute. Sometimes it helps to turn it upside down. All right, you want to let that thing kind of get a little bit large. Keep it upside down. That's something that I've never heard anybody mention, but that really helps. Keep that jewel upside down. Let gravity work with you. you grab your tender bundle. And you want to set it inside the tender bundle. Now with this light fluffy stuff here, it's liable to catch on pretty quick. Close it up. Got you down here. Blow on it. There you go. You cram it inside. All right, success. So now what you want to do is you want to lay your other sticks on top like this. And you're probably going to want to blow on it some more to make sure you have success. I haven't even looked at the camera. Yeah, I've got it on camera. There you go. That's pretty much all you do. Stick a few here and there. And success. Alright, so that is two fires and two fire lays. That is, oh, let's see, that is the, um, the log cabin fire. The log cabin fire. Now, the first it was a lean-to fire with a hand drill, and then this is the flint and steel with char cloth. And I'm fixing to show you another method for preparing from this fire. Now, see, this thing, it's just, it just literally, it just takes off on its own. Isn't that cool? I'm going to show you the other method of preparing for this fire with this. Flat piece of wood. <laughs> Ain't that neat. Alright, I'm going to let that die down just a little bit. Dang, I guess this cold weather is zapping my battery. All right, now, as you can see, up. just during the fire, uh, the uh, battery change, that is a roaring fire. And it's fixing to collapse onto itself. I put a little bit more on the roof, but it's still fixing to collapse. But that's okay, because it's going... That is the log cabin fire. Okay, now I am going to show you. Let's take a peek right here. It's easy down here, and I'm going to show you another neat little trick. This is how you prepare for the next fire. You take a piece of wood that's been split in half. Okay. You take your saw. Let's see. You take your saw and saw a bunch of notches in it. <laughs> Saw bunch. I'm going to try to get them as close together as possible. Something and something. You get the basic idea. Alright. So now what you do, so you you back over here to the fire, and you just lay it on the fire. Just 
just like that. You got you got to kind of watch it. It doesn't take long. What you're doing is you're trying to char it. We'll leave that on there for another minute. All right, that ought to be good enough right there. And that's it. All right, I got the flames gone and it's just barely going like this. So what I want to do is I don't want to lay this on the ground. What I want to do want to keep it off the ground so I'm gonna put a piece of wood right here and I'm just gonna let it cool just like that I'm not gonna blow on it not gonna put any air on it okay and see what you can do is once you've got this thing charred this unlike just a split piece of wood this will take a spark from a ferro rod if you happen to not have any grass or if you don't have any char cloth okay like if you don't have if you don't have any kind of material to char, char the wood just like this, and it'll take a spark from a ferro rod. I believe the ferro rod was going to be our third method, and I got to see what I wrote down for the third fire lay. That's all for today. Uh, two fires a day, two today, and two whenever I can get back out here. <laughs> so, all right, log cabin fire, flint and steel, and a charred half wood. So I'm just going to let that sit there and go out, and we shall see if it works tomorrow. <laughs> Alright, day two, fire three. Alright, now fire three is going to be a ferro rod, and I'm going to use uh, what's called the star. The fire lay is going to be the star lay. Okay, and what that is, is that's where you take logs and you, you, you have the fire in the middle and you feed them in. Okay. You can use really huge logs, but I'm not going to be using that big of logs. Just a small version of it. But The star lay gets a lot of, uh, uh, it gets a bad rap because a lot of people are like, it's very, very hard. you got to get a good established fire going for it to, to work. But there's a trick involved in making it work. And I'm going to show you the trick. There's just, just a little bit of prep towards it to... Uh, help you along the line here so I'll show you how to do that I'll show you how I do it my method of it and then we'll see what we can do with the ferro rod now with a ferro rod you can do pretty much anything because uh, it throws off a shower sparks you can do any kind of charred material natural or man-made you can do dried grass you can do wood shavings I'm gonna try to do the little trick with the charred log that we did yesterday for those chances where there are no leaves there are no pine straw there is no uh, tender fungus or horseshoe fungus or there's nothing to work with uh, and all you've got is wood so we're going to try that see how that works out all right what you want to do is start out with uh, four logs okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to chop the ends of them just like this chop one side we'll chop the other side now we're going to use all these shavings here that are that are coming off. We're not going to waste them. All right, you want nice sharp edge like that right there on all four of them, okay? And then all these shavings right here, these dry shavings, you're going to keep those. They'll aid in starting the fire now I've got these pieces done I have four pieces that I have uh, cut a point on them a lot of people will just take these things and they'll just run four of them together like this but what you got to do is you got to carve them to give them a, a sharp edge to uh, get the fire going to them and the advantage of that is is all the pieces that you chop off slam on the ground so I don't dump them everywhere 
the pieces that you chop off will help aid in getting the fire ready. And I always catch stuff like this in a do-rag. Alright. So let's see these over here. Take a look at what I'm gonna do here. So what you do now is I'll take another do-rag, okay, and I'll lay it here. Let's see how this does. And then just make a bunch of feathers. It's easy up over there. And then you just make a bunch of curls. Some wood curls good, some doesn't. See, that, that's the good wood right there. Until you hit a knot. Yeah, that knot's messing me up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make up a whole bunch of curls like this right here. And these curls will aid in making the fire. Okay. Now these will take the ferro rod spark themselves, but we're going to uh, try the uh, the charred wood and see if we can work with it. Because uh, some wood works, some doesn't. We're going to hope it does. It's a neat trick. The ground is very extremely wet and muddy, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a base of, of twigs that have bark on them. Every little bit that you make is to your advantage. To get up off the mud. Now let me see if that is centered in the camera. It's pretty close to centered. We're gonna stick with that. Alrighty. Now, <clears throat> uh, remember the stages of uh, there's a uh, tinder, kindling, and fire. Yeah, there's an old rule, and as long as you stick to that rule and understand it, you'll do fine. And what that is is tinder. If tinder will take a spark within five seconds, it's considered to be tinder. If uh, kindling, if it takes a flame and accepts it within five seconds, it's considered kindling. And then everything else is fuel. If it won't take a flame readily within five seconds, and if it certainly won't take a spark, then that's it's neither okay so I got a little bit of sticks there and so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna sprinkle a pile of these chips in here All right. sprinkle these on now I'm gonna keep a few now this was just from chopping the four logs but I'm gonna keep a few here all right now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my sharp sticks here I'm going to arrange them like this. And see so what you do is you feed them into the fire as the fire gets going. I actually should have I actually should have done this before I did the other part. But it doesn't matter. We got to get it going anyway. All right. A little bit more on here. All right, now let's put a few curls on. Made a whole, whole mess of curls here. Put on a pile of curls. And we will probably continue to put on piles of curls until this jewel gets going. And probably put more branches on top of it. Remember that pre preparation to fire is key. All right. Now, I'm going to get a couple of more sticks that I can lay on top for insurance. And then we're going to strike with a ferro rod. I have a large ferro rod here. I might use this one, and I might use one that a friend gave me. <laughs> what I have here is I have the charred piece. Okay. Get back cat and then I have some plant life here and what I'm gonna try to do is transfer a spark from here from here to here all right so let's see if we can do that don't know if I can or not got my ferro rod here 
that neat. My friend Dark Matter made it for me. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my knee on here. Put my knee on here to hold it down. And I'm gonna try to strike this. Cats, psst, get away! Cats keep coming over here, checking me out. All right, I'm gonna shower this with sparks. Some of this may be the ferrocerium shavings getting in, but every little bit will help on this. All right, and that's catching on pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna... I don't think it's working. Well, hey, there's an amber. Oh, I'm blowing them away. Nah, there may be too much moisture in the air for this to work. Let me try this other one here. It's got a bigger striker. <laughs> all right we have flames so what we're going to do now is we're going to move it over here and set it on here have i got the camera right yeah now what i'm going to do with them some of the ferrocerium shavings. Now I'm going to put some of this more on here. Alright. Put a few more shavings on here. Alright. There you go. Now, some people may be complaining and saying, why don't you just use the ferro rod? But, I mean, that's, that, that is a way of transferring from a charred piece of wood to this. All right. Oh, I probably need to put, let's put a few more pieces of wood on here. Anything to get it going. Because essentially what we're doing is once you get the fire to life, then what you want to do is you want to start pushing these logs in. Now this is a very, very small version of this thing. You really need a bigger version of it. I mean, in, in real life, that's what it is. It's a much larger version. But you're just trying to nurse the ends of the logs to life. And you do that in whatever manner possible. So you just take handfuls of these chips, which I just dumped half of them out. And you just kind of throw them around to help it breathe itself into life. All right. Now that, now if you nurse the fire enough, you'll get it going. All right. That is the star fire. Now the charred wood didn't work as great as I did. I struggled with it. And I think that's because there's so much moisture in the air. But normally that works good if it's reasonably but dry outside. It's just it's just a little something to remember. And just remember anything that you want to char, you can char. Any kind of natural materials. Oh, let's see, put a few more logs. 
little sticks on here that are just for insurance. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting the ends of those things uh, going. And that's what you do is you'll, you'll feed these, these logs here, all four of them, you'll feed them in. It's a good way of keeping the fire going all night. Now right now this fire is sucking the moisture out of the ground. That's what happens when the ground is all muddy and wet. <clears throat> Alright. Get ready for what we're going to prepare for the next fire. Now, that thing's really going good now. I may not have to add anything else to it. I hope it doesn't die out. But I got another tin right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to char some material. Now you can char anything. You can char cattails. Uh, any kind of plant matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this dried grass here and we're going to char it black. Now the trick to it is charring it without burning it completely up. Burning it up is a bad thing. So what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to make, make it neat, fit, fit neatly into the, the container here. Try to do a neat job of it. Just cut off some of this material here. Now the thing is, is when this stuff's dry like this, the reason a lot of people char stuff, the reason that the people will char a lot of stuff is because it takes a tiny, tiny, tiny spark so, so easy. Now, if you have a ferro rod, you could just take this material here dry and char it. You could char it dry, but with a flint and steel, you wouldn't be able to uh, put a tiny spark on that as well. So we're just going to set that right there and we're going to let that char. Now that tan, you can already see the smoke coming off of it. It's already starting to char the material. But anyway, that'll take the tiniest of sparks once that's charred, that natural charred material. This might be broom sage. I'm not real sure, but I didn't take the fluffy ends because the fluffy end will definitely take a spark easy. I took the more coarse ends. You can also char punk wood, which is like a rotten wood. You can see the smoke coming out of that container. When it stops smoking, you'll pull it off the fire. As a matter of fact, it probably wouldn't hurt to turn it around. Put it closer to the fire. I can do that without screwing it up. Let's do it like that. Now, if you look very closely, you can also see I don't know if you can see it or not. This actual log here, the end of it is glowing. Now this log over here, you have to shove it deeper into the fire because it wasn't quite close enough. Same thing with this other side. Let's go over here to this other side. Try not to melt my camera. You can take this and shove this into the pile of glowing coals. That's what you got to do. Is just continuously shove them up into that pile. Just like that. And the ends will be nice and glowing red. Now I'm going to pull this tin off here for a minute because I'm going to show you what the logs are supposed to look like. You got to keep scooting them together and you got to keep blowing on them until they turn out like, like this log right here. So let's pull this off a minute. <clears throat> now I'm going to pull this out for a minute. And that's what it's supposed to look like. Easy. 
and you just keep shoving them together like this. Just like that. We'll put this back on. We'll let that sit a little bit longer. When it stops smoking, I'll pull it off. The light, we've looked at this fire enough. Let me pull this off. Right there. That is exactly what you're looking for with this fire. I'm going to pull this off and I'm going to show it to you. That is what you're looking for. You want the ends of these logs glowing like that. Every once in a while you can blow on it like that to keep some life into it. Now I haven't added anything else to this fire. That's just what you do. Now if you want to, this can be your fuel and every once in a while you can either blow on it or you can add uh, twigs or sticks to the top of it. I may not have left this on long enough, but let's take a peek at it. The center's still brown, the edges are black, so let's throw it back on there for a little while. See what it does in a little while. Starting to get late, and I'm just going to do one fire today. So let's pull this off and see how it looks. I'll let it cool off for just a minute. I'll put it right over here. Let's blow on that and see how the fire's doing. See? Nice and glowing. You just keep everything going in there. Now you could you, you, you could imagine what that would be like if you had a really big logs in there. And you can also use five or six logs if you want to. But this is just to kind of demonstrate the basic idea of what you're doing and how you're getting those big logs like that to catch fire. Uh, chop them into a sharp point and you'll be good to go. Nice glowing coals, coals. All right, now let's look in here in my box. Now, even if this is charred, this char will work great for a, a ferro rod or a flint and steel, but I've already done the ferro rod. I've already done the flint and steel, so I won't be using this for the next fire because the next fire is going to be bow drill, okay? Bow drill, you make an ember, you put it in a, in a uh, tinder bundle, bird's nest. So, I mean, there's... There's really nothing you can take from this fire to do a bow drill fire, and it calls for four methods. So what I will do is, yeah, there we go. I have charred material. So what I'm gonna do with this now is I'm gonna close it up and I'm gonna let it cool a little longer, and I'll put that in my canvas bag and I'll put that in one of my backpacks. I don't wanna leave this outside. I don't wanna leave it out in my shop. I'm gonna bring it in the house after it cools and put it in a bag so that it'll uh, it won't absorb a bunch of moisture and this stuff here will take a spark in two seconds because it's already charred all right so tomorrow we're gonna break out the bow drill and we're gonna do the TP fire all right see you tomorrow day three fire four all right fire number four is going to be a bow drill now the way a bow drill works is uh, the bow drills, you make the amber and then the amber goes into a bird's nest and then you blow it into a flame. Now with the last one, <clears throat> what I did is I made charred material. So you strike this with a ferro rod or flint and steel and I've already done that so I'm not going to use this. But I'll explain how this works. The way this stuff works is, is the charred material takes a flame very, very easily. I mean it takes a spark very easily even the most minute of sparks so let's say you carry this with you in your kit next morning you wake up everything's damp there's plenty of material out there that could normally be struck with a ferro rod if it was dry if it was the middle of the day and the wind was blowing it and the sun was hitting it you'd be a-okay but the thing is is if this stuff's damp 
you're going to take a ferro rod and you're going to strike and strike and strike and strike and strike and strike. Okay. So to conserve your ferro rod and make things a little easier, what you'll do is you'll carry the charred material and then you'll strike this and it'll be glowing and then you'll touch this material to the glow and blow it into flame. And then you've got your flames here. So that's how it works. But like I said, I've already done the ferro rod, so I'm not going to waste this stuff. I'm going to put this in my pack and, and I'm going to keep it for another time. So on with the bow drill and the next fire lay is going to be the TP fire lay. Number four fire lay will be the TP fire lay. And what that is, is take a bunch of wood and you just lane it all together like in a TP shape. Let's see. Maybe too far. I'll adjust the camera. Right. So what you want to do is you want to stick some stuff in the ground like this. Like that. And you want to kind of support it a little bit. And you're just going to be leaning a bunch of wood together. And hope that it doesn't fall over. The idea behind this is you're going to put a bunch of wood in between it. And you're going to hope that that wood supports itself. And you're going to leave... There's the, the beauty of this is, is all the big gaps between it. That makes it to where... Uh, makes it to where plenty of oxygen gets to your fire. Now I'm going to leave a gap over here on this side. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my tender bundle in that gap and then I'm going to lay more wood on top of it. So I'll take and I'll just lay more wood over it as soon as I've got it in there. So I'm going to set them to the side right there. And then I'm going to lay more wood all around it. Now unlike the fire lay, I mean unlike the uh, now you got to be careful or you'll knock this stuff everywhere. But once the fire gets going it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't matter if you knock it everywhere. Now the difference between this, you may look at this and you may think, oh, well, that looks like the uh, that looks like the um, the lean-to fire. The lean-to fire has a green stick stabbed in the ground or what, however, and all the wood is leaned against it. All of this wood is leaned against itself. Okay, it's just leaned together. It's, they call it a teepee fire, and you put the tender bundle under here, and then you'll cover it up with this. And for good luck, it's such a windy day, once I put the tender bundle in, I'm going to throw a few small sticks on top of it. That, that always seems to help. It doesn't hurt a thing. Alright, so now let's go get the bow drill. And see what we can do. Let's see, I'll put a couple more over here. Very, very windy day today. And so to help ensure success, what I like to do is I like to take some extra dry material. And what I'll do is I will wad it up. Kind of break it down a little bit. So that it'll lay flat. This just helps ensure success. And then I'm going to ease over here to my TP, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it inside the TP. Now, it ain't like that's, it ain't like it's cheating in or anything or anything because I mean that's all natural material. All you're doing is you're helping to get flames bursting up through all of your sticks to catch it on fire quicker. As far as a bow drill goes, I've got three bow drills here. And I've heard some arguments in the past about the cordage. Well, I have one with paracord. Alright. I have one with uh, natural leather cordage. And then I have one, I think I'm pronouncing this right. This is a uh, Hilleberg from Sweden. It's a Hilleberg uh, guy line, maybe ridge line cord. 
and I think I'm pronouncing it right. But the thing is, is they all slip once they've gotten glazed over and used enough times. And I don't do the bow drill much. I haven't glazed these over much. But whenever they get tight or whenever they get loose, all I do is I put my finger down here and I'll, I'll give it a little pressure. As The more pressure I put down on the spindle, the more it slips and the more I'll put pressure right on here. Okay, so we're going to try to do the bow drill for this fire. And I have my tender bundle right here nearby. And I'm going to drop my ember in and cram it under there. Now, as soon as you get flames with this and you put it into your fire, turn it upside down. And you'll have a little bit more of a success rate. Let gravity work for you. All right, the wind's picking up pretty good, so I hope I'll have success with this. I have a willow uh, hearth board. And I have a willow spindle. It's a pretty old set. And then I'm going to catch my amber in a small piece of cedar. Now, I don't do this very often because I hate it. I can't stand it. I don't like doing it. I hate the bow drill. I've always hated it. hated it more than anything. There's too many working parts. Now, here's a bow, and I'm going to use the one that's got the Healy Bird cord. You put it on the inside, like this, upside down, and then you turn it, like that. I'm hoping I'm getting on the camera. The sun's blinding me. And then you'll hold it while you put your socket on top. So, let's see if we can have a little bit of success doing this. I hope I can see that. I hope you can see that on camera and my foot ain't in the way. Yeah, I think you can. Let's put this on. Let's see what we can do. Now, I could have stopped earlier, but I wanted success, so I kept going. Now, I hope the wind don't blow it out. Now, if you'll notice where I stopped, as I put more pressure on it, it started spinning. And that's when I stopped and grabbed with my finger so that I could put more pressure on it. Alright, enough dilly dallying. Oh man, that wind is blowing terrible. I'm gonna go ahead and get it in here. Let's see if I can move the camera over here. To the fire. Get! Yeah. Alright move my mirror over. All right, let's see if we can have some success with this. There you go. I thought I heard it flaming up. Let's blow a little more. Ah. 
There you go. And see now for success, you want to add a few sticks to it. See how the flames are already coming up around it because I uh, had a, a large amount of grass in there? Let's put these on here now. Alright. Success. Now you can just continue to put all these small pieces of wood in here and it'll catch on. <clears throat> Dang, that wind is really blowing it. And so what it does is as, as the flames come up through here, through the openings, it'll catch all this stuff on fire and it'll just fall into the fire. But that's it. Whenever you get a successful bow drill set, and it's good and broken into, hang on to it. Because getting an ember is easy once you've got a good broken in set. I've only got three sets because I'm not a big fan of them. I prefer a hand drill. But there's just certain times of year you can find dry weeds. You can find dry dead trees pretty much year round. Wind is just ferocious. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this. I mean, you can see. Let's move you over a little closer. You can see how it's starting to catch the tops on fire. It's starting to get the tops of this on fire, and then it's going to wind up just sort of falling down. I'm gonna let that burn down for a minute, then I'm going to show you the final segment where I am uh, preparing for the next video. I mean, the next fire, how I do it. See, the fire is going really good now, and it hasn't even collapsed yet. It's still got a good opening on the inside there, and I mean, the, the grass is done gone. But due to the fact of the TP lay, the flames that came up through caught the wood very fast. Now for the final one, what I do is you can get some uh, false tender or some horseshoe fungus or uh, if you can find it, chaga, if it's in your area and all you do then, and you have a metal pail with you. Now the way this works, you got the metal pail, take the lid off, all right? The way this works is you take this and then you just catch it on fire. Now I'm catching the fuzzy end on fire. And see how that stuff smolders? Now I want it to smolder. I'm gonna let it smolder. I'm gonna catch it all the way around. Now this is a good method for, let's say, if you've got like one match, and then the next day you can't, you can't start a fire. Or if you, your bow drill set wears out or you throw it away or don't want to carry it. And what you do is you can carry this and this stuff will smolder and smolder and smolder and smolder. And I'm going to blow on it a little bit. See if you can see how, how red it can get. Now this stuff will smolder for days. Depending on the size of it. So what you'll do with it is you'll take it and you'll put it in your bucket. And you take your lid and you put your lid with just a small opening so that you're limiting the oxygen. Okay, what you do? Ah, fire just fell over. <laughs> but that's okay. I've got a good fire going now. You got all them logs are caught on and you can just pile big logs on top now. So let's say that this is smoldering. So the next day you wake up, you pull this out and it's smoldered all night. You don't have a match. So what you're going to do, let's see if I can do this. Maybe too moist of a day. Sometimes you have to fight with it. Sometimes it takes about a 30 minutes to do this. Take your dry material.
it's still smoldering. Let me set it right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tighten up on this stuff just a little bit. Like I said, it's it, it's not easy to do. I've still got some red. Well, anyway, I got my four fires. <laughs> I got my four fires, so I blackened this. I blackened this right here, as you can see. I almost caught it on. But sometimes it takes 15 or 20 minutes to blow this in. I got my four fires, so I'm not even going to fool with the fifth fire, but that's how that works. I've still got some red on it that's smoldering. See it smoldering? See, that stuff will just smolder away. But anyway, I know this video is way over an hour, so I'm just going to cut it off here. I got my four fires, got my four fire lays, and my four methods of procuring fire in the future from another fire. All right. Uh, I like to thank One Foot in the Wild for tagging me on this fire challenge. If you like this video, you can thank One Foot in the Wild. If you hated this video, you can thank One Foot in the Wild. <laughs> so, uh,. I guess that's it for this video, and uh, y'all wish me luck, and the two other guys that's doing this, I wish y'all luck. Uh, I think it's Survivor Metal Man, and maybe Country Prepper, I think. Good luck to y'all, too. I hope y'all have fun with it. I hope you've learned something. Uh, it was a lot of work for me, but it's very enjoyable. Okay, so, I shall see you in the next one.